this episode was brought to you by the donut. So ladies, what's the most precious resource in the world? Uh, is it money? No, Lilith, it's your time. Time is precious. So why would you use it on a biased and a stressful news source? I don't know. You must be really dumb. <laughs> It's boring, it's dry and negative. It's near impossible to read and not think humanity's doomed. I agree. Most of the time when I read the news, I feel doomed. But that's where the donut comes in. They turn this time-consuming, anxiety-ridden chore into a quick guilty pleasure that ensures you'll never be the boring one in a conversation. And their goal is to make the news quick, engaging and easy to understand. And did I mention it's 100% free? So you don't need to pay for a subscription? No, Lilith. It's available for free through text and email. How does that work? Well, you just go to www.thedonut.co forward slash FDS. So if you subscribe to The Donut within the month of June using our link, they'll be giving away a hand-dipped tumbler to three people. That's T-H-E-D-O-N-U-T dot C-O forward slash FDS. Or check the link in the show notes. Queens, welcome to the Female Dating Strategy, the meanest female link podcast on the internet. I'm Ro. And I'm Lilith. And unfortunately, Savannah, I don't know how much I want to say, but like, due to a medical emergency, she's still not with us, but she's okay. She's okay. She's going to be out for a little bit. Yeah. So, (laughs) sorry, we know she's a fan favorite. And we miss her a lot, uh, but you know, she does need to... To recover. Yeah. She's currently in recovery, so it's just, once again, Lilith and I. So today we're going to revisit a subject... That's near and dear to our heart. (laughs) We shouldn't say that. The subject of female incels. And it was sparked by us being name dropped an article written by The Atlantic, where they were talking about fem cells and the difficulties that fem cells face and... They were painting this as the rise of a new movement that's a counter to the incel movement. We thought it had a lot of good insight on how fem cells think and what is going on with them. And we thought this would also be a good way to insert some strategies to help the dating lives of fem cells if they are indeed fem cells, which we'll talk about because some of the women that are saying they're fem cells are probably not actually fem cells. Some of them don't even want to date. I mean, there's self-identified fem cells, and then there's women who are the female version of fem cells, or the female version of just male incels, but they don't call themselves fem cells. Female incels, as is described in this actual article, are women who feel that they are not as attractive as the average person, and therefore their dating options are limited, and they feel that they're being socially excluded or socially punished for that. Because that does happen. People get bullied for the way that they look, etc. So, you know, what I like about this is that it it is kind of drawing attention to the fact that there's a segment of women that have grown up being bullied about their looks and maybe being antagonized for that. And, you know, let's talk about why that is, what's happening, and then what they can do to help themselves. Okay, so articles titled, What Do Female Incels Really Want? Online, groups of women have started using the rhetoric of the incel movement, but to what end? Author is Caitlin Tiffany. So let's read it. We were all ugly, Amanda, a 22-year-old student from Florida, told me, recalling the online community she found when she was 18. Men didn't like us, guys didn't want to be with us, and it was fine to acknowledge it. This Reddit forum was called Our True Fem Cells, and she commented there under the username Strange and Ugly Girl. Amanda didn't post very often, but she checked in every day on the community of self-identified fem cells, or involuntarily celibate women. I agreed to refer to her by her first name only to separate her current life from her former internet identity. They came to complain about the superficiality of men and the privilege of pretty women and to share their experiences moving through the world in an unattractive body, which therefore disadvantaged them romantically, socially, and economically. They were finding the modern dating landscape, the image-based apps, the commodified dating market, the illusory freedom to be found in hookup culture to be unnavigable. And they talked about taking a pink pill and opening their eyes to the reality that society was misogynistic and quote, lookist. There's a lot going on there so far. I mean, that's pretty consistent with what True Fem Cells was before it was um, booted by Reddit, which I actually think True Fem Cells was booted unfairly. I think that was another one of those like Reddit misogyny things. Yeah, like where they're trying to be fair because they booted the incels for being violent terrorists. Yeah, but the True Fem Cells, they just like complained about men. Honestly, like I kind of liked when they were around. This is a both sides thing by Reddit because they banned incels. They felt like they had to ban Fem Cells or the incels like probably flooded True Fem Cells and just started reporting it like crazy until it got banned. And this is what we're talking about, why it's, it's unsustainable to be on Reddit. Because what happens is the men who felt like they were being pushed off for being incels just got extremely re- retaliatory towards any female space, including true femcels, which most of it was just them being sad. 
They thought that it was women's or feminists' fault that their subreddits got banned rather than their own fucking fault for being violent fucking terrorists. Like, these men, you know, MGTOW, Red Pill, incels, are incels, or what is it, brain cells? They had a bunch of different incel subreddits, right? And they kept getting banned. They kept making new ones. And then when they got, those new ones got banned, they kept attacking women and so on, right? So, yeah, that's why Reddit as a platform is not sustainable because it's got this large, angry male user base that hates women, right? And so I actually kind of miss when true fem cells were around because those sorts of women like hung out on true fem cells or on the pink pill they stayed away from fds right after they got banned it was very inconvenient to us that they all started coming to fds and expecting us to like talk about lookism and the pink pill and how you know it's so horrible and unfair that men are attracted to attractive women and it's like i don't know what to say to you it's like that's just life I don't know what to say. Like, well, okay, so we can talk about it because some of it, honestly, based on some of the pictures that were revealed of some of the fem cells, some of it is entirely in their head. They weren't even that ugly. Yeah, some of it seemed like it was more, they were socially awkward and perhaps, you know, low self esteem and then like non white women who internalized like white beauty standards so much that they felt unattractive. So we can dive into that a little bit more when we talk about strategies for fem cells and we start to outline what most of their actual problem is <laughs> rather than just truly, truly being ugly. There's no nice way to put it, but they are so far away from the average that they are noticeably unattractive to people, right? So if you're average, you're probably fine and you have more than enough dating options. But if you're just like really outside the average through physical deformity or something like that, then it's yes, I think it's fair to talk about the difficulties with that. Yeah, I want to say actually, first of all, like this episode, we're going to try to be like fair, but we're not going to sugarcoat things. Okay, like one thing that bothers me a little bit with like the everybody is beautiful, like everyone is beautiful it feels so fake. First of all, it's not true. Secondly, like a lot of unattractive people, like being unattractive actually does really affect their life. I've read, you know, a lot of comments from unattractive people saying like, oh, you know, being unattractive really affects my life. And so the whole everybody's beautiful, everyone's beautiful bothers me because it's just words. It doesn't actually make my life better. And they make that point actually later in this article. So let's keep reading because I think we can discuss that more in depth when they talk about that. Yeah, we need to be honest. We need to be honest to the fem cells. Yeah. Yeah, we need to be honest. Let's cut the crap like real talk right i'm not going to be deliberately cruel but you know please understand that i might make some comments that some people might take personally sometimes (laughs) give it to them straight (laughs) here's the thing like some people talk about how horrible i am such a mean girl or whatever and it's like sometimes you just need to speak like honestly i I have to say the thing okay like don't take my words personally okay that's what i'm saying anyways okay so continuing they could be funny in 2019 a commenter repeated a pretty friend suggestion that nobody really needs to wear makeup adding five heart emoji and a link to the joke subreddit r forward slash thanks i'm cured (laughs) (laughs) they could be kind of mean like male incels they mocked lucky beautiful women whom they called stacy's mostly they wrote about being sad normies can't comprehend real loneliness and early posts begins guys don't treat ugly girls like people reads another so yeah that's i mean they're a constant bullying of women they found to be more attractive as part of why they couldn't sit on female dating strategy after a while because they just got a little bit they got so pissed off at us for like not letting them sit with us kind of thing like oh they're mean girls regina george but it's like we can only handle so much of your shit before we start to set boundaries you know people think we're horrible people for excluding themselves or whatever right but like it was for a reason every time there was a tiktok of an attractive woman putting on makeup or whatever they'd all be like she's performing for the male gaze she's such a slut or whatever like calling her stacy and shit like a lot of people that might not have seen those because as moderators we removed those but it's just constant negativity or posting like long rants about lookism and then like weird racialized dating advice that felt like very similar to some of the male counterparts on on reddit that were like it's basically like guys who are non-white that would just complain about like oh i wish i was white all of the time and so like we don't want to read like post after post of you complaining about not being white like that's just reeks of low self-esteem and it's like i get secondhand cringe as a woman of color myself like girl you have to stop focusing on this because it just makes you less likely to focus on your own unique skills and abilities and attractiveness and that kind of stuff app just reading it reading it reading not only is it depressing but also it's not true and also like the self-flagellation doesn't help them right if we just keep posting it it doesn't help other people that's the thing like most of the time actually can be really good to have a community of people where you can like you know commiserate about your problems and find common ground and you know come up with solutions all that normally is a very very good thing but this is one of those things where having a community to talk about how unattractive you feel and bullying women who are more attractive than you 
you. And in their head, they think they're justified because they're like, you know, and I get this a lot on Twitter too, where it's like, oh, you're higher than me in the social hierarchy. Therefore, by attacking you, I'm actually fighting the power kind of thing, right? It's kind of like, you know, in their mind, it's like a system of oppression, but instead of being based on sex or being based on wealth or something like that, like a normal person, they base it on attractiveness. And so they see it as like attractive people are oppressing less attractive people by being hostile to attractive people. They're like, it's they're like rising up and, you know, fighting the power. They think of it as like a social justice type of thing, right? It's just a lot. (laughs) I don't know how to say it. It's just a lot. (laughs) Okay, so continuing, I was the kind of girl in school where it was like people would say, oh, he has a crush on you to make fun of the guy, Amanda told me. She was anxious and unhappy, but she didn't want to talk about any of it with her friends. When she first heard the term femcel, it offered some clarity. In a very literal way, I was involuntarily celibate and female. So I was like, okay, that applies. Okay, so yeah, so a lot of these women were bullied. Yeah. So online, she found thousands of other women who were trying to figure out how to live without the kind of romantic love that our society has deemed a pillar, maybe the pillar of happiness. Even though the women in the subreddit were pretty depressed and sad, it did give me reassurance. She said, at least there are other people out there who are like me and they weren't completely weird. They were pretty normal. Oh, that's another thing actually that distinguishes fem cells and incels is that most fem cells are actually like relatively normal people. Like they might have low self esteem, they might be, you know, slightly less attractive or even just like average in appearance. But incels, male incels are like insane. Like they're all fucking weebs. They're all coomers. They like look gross. They act gross. And they externalize all their problems, right? Part of the reason they got banned is because they were trying to plot like a government coup to redistribute women. <laughs> And the fem cells don't do that shit. The fem cells don't do that shit. They're more or less, like this article says, just very sad. And sometimes they do come up with some of these cockamamie theories about attractiveness. But it doesn't come up. It doesn't result in violent political action. So it's like a huge line. Yeah. It's not even really political. It's more or less like them trying to analyze, like they're trying to figure out why they aren't attractive, right? It's more of a self-flagellation trying to figure out like to some extent, especially when you get into different parts of different ideas about race and then proximity and then where you grew up. Some of it is like culturally induced social hierarchies due to like things like racism, etc. And then so other things are just like, even if he was within their own culture and their majority feeling like they're still unattractive in accordance to the beauty standards of their own culture and them trying to dissect that kind of thing. And in some ways, it's just a discussion about intersectionality, etc. But yeah, it's nothing like incels. But again, it, that's the line. It's like the fem cells will have a discussion about intersectionality and the incels will like do a bomb threat or some shit, you know? Incels are mall shooters. I, yeah, incels are mall shooters. They're school shooters, right? Like they do crazy shit. I just want to be very 100% clear and avoid the sort of false equivalency that I see going on all the time. Incels are filming themselves harassing and abusing women in public. Yeah. So as much as I like to dunk on fem cells, I actually am low key kind of defending them right now, just because like they are nowhere near as bad as male incels. I just want to be perfectly clear. There's so many people who try to draw a false equivalency and be like, well, like female incels are using the same rhetoric as male incels and it could become dangerous in the future. Well, it's not. Stop speculating on whether it could become worse in the future or whether the rhetoric is dangerous or whatever. Focus on what you actually see in front of you and they are not the fucking same. So here's a paragraph reiterates that around the same time that Amanda was getting involved in the fem cell community, mass media attention was focused on its far better known male counterpart. Because of course, the lonely and angry young men of the internet became a subject of fascination because their language was disgusting and their threats of violence against women were real. Incels deified the murderer Elliot Roger, who killed six people and himself in Isla Vista, California in 2014, and left behind a YouTube video in which he outlined his plans to punish women for rejecting him. Right. So male audacity here. So coverage also eliminated the broader manosphere, the sprawling online network of disaffected young men that overlapped with the so-called alt-right and with President Donald Trump's rabid army of mega trolls. Okay, so this is a side note. I don't like when the mainstream media automatically makes all of the manosphere alt-right because it's actually pretty politically diverse. Yeah, that's actually so true. There are left-wing manosphere people. There are left-wing incels. Violent incels, yeah. Actually, there are some of it who literally take like a communist approach and they see themselves, again, as like a sort of proletariat of ugly people and that they need to rise up and like redistribute. (laughs) They have this idea of like redistributing sex as though it's the same as like resources or whatever, right? It's just too convenient that whenever we have these like male incel movements that they always try to assign it to a political party rather than maleness. And like, it's just fucking maleness. Like, I'm not saying there's not 
not these MAGA like right wing trolls. I'm just saying it's not exclusively that by any means. And the fact that they've chosen to like pigeonhole it there is actually in some respects dangerous because like we said, it's not that left wing men are not devoid of misogyny, right? Like these guys are the like the pro porn, pro sissy porn, pro BDSM kink, you know, pro prostitution, pro pedophilia narratives, pro pedophilia guys. And like those guys are that's a large percentage of the insults just as much as these like super patriarchal race hierarchy right wing trolls. Exactly. Yeah. So it's both of them. Before you continue, I do want to say actually in the article, it says of disaffected young men that overlapped with the so called alt right. So it does say they overlapped. And yes, there is some overlap. But I just feel that there needs to be more recognition on the left wing incels. Hell yeah. Like they're actually in some respects, I feel like people understand the alt right is all like fringe. Sometimes the left wing parts because left wing media is so mainstream and like self reinforcing that they ignore the fact that they're creating incels and violent misogynist movements on the left side. Like the whole narrative around like not fucking me is discrimination. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like that whole narrative. Yeah, that's left wing <laughs> incels. That is a left wing incel movement, right? The whole thing that lesbians have to take dick, that kind of shit, right? Like, that's what we're talking about, of like, rabid male entitlement, regardless of political stripes. Exactly. In a 2018 report on the intersection of misogyny and white supremacy, the Anti-Defamation League outlined how incel's sense of entitlement to sex was leading them toward other extremist spaces and beliefs. This is a scary and dizzyingly complicated story. And femcels, whose rage was quieter and whose presence was smaller, didn't really factor in. Because they're not these guys. <laughs> Yeah, because they're not as scary. <laughs> That's why. They're just sad. They're just sad, mostly. Five years later, incels are a known quantity and femcels are the new mystery. In recent months, headlines have named 2022 the year of the femcel and heralded a coming, quote, femcel revolution, wherein women are reclaiming involuntary celibacy and asserting their right to give a name to their loneliness and alienation. You see how like not threatening in comparison to the incel revolution the incel revolution wasn't that guy um who drove his van into a crowd of people who cited the incel revolution in canada no the incel revolution is where all the ugly men rise up and take over the government and forcibly redistribute women sexually like the handmaid's tale okay so literally like dystopian crazy shit femcel revolution is where they reclaim involuntary celibacy and assert their right to give a name to their loneliness and alienation so really all it is is like we demand the right to talk about our problems. But there's no government taking over stuff at all happening there. The attack I'm referencing is by Alec Manassian, and he killed 10 people in Toronto in 2018 as part of the, quote, incel rebellion. Yeah. I mean, just compare and contrast what the femcels are trying to do versus what the incels are trying to do. The incels... Like what their actual goals and tactics are completely different. Yeah, let's be fair to the femcels that they are nowhere near and they're not the same as incels and everybody trying to both sides is really disingenuous. So this new recognition of femcels has tended to stop there, but incel had political meaning. People who identified with the term were read as reactionaries, the young, mostly white men who felt left behind as society progressed beyond its historical focus on their specific needs. Yeah, <laughs> I know. suck it up. Well, again, this feels like I mean, it's probably mostly white because the United States is mostly white. But if you actually <laughs> read the incel, this incel forums, they have names for it's multiracial. It's multiracial. That's how they came up with stuff like rice cell and curry cell. They call themselves that, by the way. <laughs> yes. For non-white incels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another one that black men use to refer to themselves that I won't repeat, but it's like... <laughs> Just take the first half of a slur and then add cell. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what they call themselves. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the incel movement is very diverse. Again, like they're saying it's mostly young white men. I mean, it is because just probably numbers wise because of the United States being mostly white. This is a male problem. Again, this it's not a political problem. It's not a racial problem. It is a male problem. Like, name the problem, you know? And each of these has their own sub-incel movements. There's, like, Asian masculinity and South Asian masculinity, and a few others, the ones that worship Kevin Samuels. Exactly. There's the generalized incel movement, and then there's sub-racialized incel movements for each of these specific racial groups, which is just all sorts of problematic. It's intersectional. It's intersectional. <laughs> Look at this beautiful harmony between <laughs> 
Yeah, like, Look at this beautiful harmony between the races bonding over male entitlement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From the fires of this. I want to say, actually, the thing that all the men have in common is that they were raised to think that they were entitled to have a woman without having to actually offer any value to the woman. Not only are incels ugly, but they actually just don't want to have to do, like, boyfriend shit. They're like, oh, the girls want you to, like, take them out to dinner and treat them really well, but I hate women. I want to treat them like shit. Why won't they date me? Like, they were raised to think they were entitled to have a woman and treat women badly. And the fact that that's not panning out for them, they are very retaliatory and abusive over that, right? Like the abusiveness is like a way of trying to reclaim power, right? Women were not raised like men to think that they were entitled to a partner, to a slave. Women were raised to think like, oh, if you don't have a man, you know, you're worthless kind of thing, right? And it's much more internalizing. It's like the expectations that men and women are raised with have had very different impacts on the fem cell versus the incel movement. But that's just me. The term femcel is now in widespread use, not just in Reddit forums, but on every major social platform, including the Gen Z favored TikTok. But we still don't know what it's for. If a femcel revolution is coming, what new world are femcels dreaming about? When Amanda talks about the femcel community, she specifically contrasts it with one other option contemporary liberal feminism or maybe quote girl boss feminism as popularized by millennials and the brands that cater to them, which we've also dragged. Because it's easy to drag. I Understandable that you criticize liberal feminism. They're finding the same holes in liberal feminism and girl boss feminism that a lot of us found. Their solutions and their discussion of it is more or less what the issue is. Which is why I think they like female dating strategy because we were one of places that were calling out the complete nonsense of liberal feminism. Yeah. They liked us because we hated the same things, but we didn't stand for the same things. Exactly. So the liberal feminist notion of like supporting all women, feeling positive all the time, it's disingenuous, she told Told me when she started identifying with the term femcel, it was partly because she felt a resentment toward a style of feminism that challenged traditional beauty standards, mostly by asking those who fell short of them to feel beautiful anyway, regardless of their lived experiences. I'd rather be able to talk about being ugly than just to try to convince myself that I'm pretty. She said, "Yeah, I agree. I think it's important to be honest and not delude yourself." And that's what I, the point I made in the female political strategy episode of like femcel feminism, right, where a lot of the push was by women who feel like they're traditionally locked out of like what society deems sexually attractive and then the push was to like make these women feel sexually attractive and I'm like if you're chasing the male gaze that's kind of a self-defeating prophecy I guess because ultimately male attention is fickle it's not that I don't think you should have more wider representation of women of different body types and etc but the issue is just more or less like if you stake all of your feminism in sexualizing women's bodies and forcing them to feel beautiful then when men don't respond that way and then women learn and they're not going to respond that way, then first of all, the femcells get upset because they feel like they've been lied to. Your feminist movement ends up being diluted because there's an over-focus on physical attractiveness as a feminist movement. Mm-hmm. What people find sexually attractive is so unique to that person, more or less, that trying to use feminism to force like a sexual politic, like a morality around who you're sexually attracted to. Yeah, is pretty futile, more or less. Like it's and the fem cells have discovered is futile, right? At least this group of fem cells. Like there's another group of fem cells who are still somewhat in denial about it. Liberal fem cells? Yeah, liberal fem cells. I want to be clear, there's different types of fem cells. There's the trad fem cells, there's the one who are like like, why are men always chasing the bad girls instead of good girls like me? There's the lib femme cells. They're the ones who are like, lesbians don't take dick. They are bigots. Or, you know, oh, if you don't, I'm 500 pounds, you know, men who don't find me attractive are fat phobic. That's another lib femme cell ideology. And then there's the rad femme cells. They're the ones who take the radical feminist angle of like, they're the ones who tend to be more into like pink pill or, you know, black pill type of stuff. If you do anything that could be remotely considered sexually attractive by anyone, you're a sellout and you're ball pop. Me. Yeah. <laughs> you're performing for the male gaze that crowd so there's different types of fem cells right and so obviously the fem cells who were more rad fem cells got really mad that we called the lib fem cells they're mad that we conflated the two i just want to be clear that all of y'all are fem cells <laughs> I mean, fact. And honestly, liberal femcellism is how we get people like, hate to keep saying her name, but Tracy Clark Flory, right? I mean, her entire feminist stick was like, I want to be as sexually attractive as like the porn stars to men, right? And like her entire feminist sexual ethos and her entire focus on the sexual revolution was about that rather than actual strategies to make women's sex life considerably better. It just becomes about like, how come I'm not the sex, the person that people find sexually attractive? It must be oppression. It must be patriarchy that's making me not sexually attractive, right? Yeah. And I'm like, sorry, you just have bad genetics. I hate to- <laughs> 
Right. Like, how do you tell someone, like, it's not patriarchy, like, that people don't find you sexually attractive. It's the same thing as we talked about in this episode about tall men with short people arms. This People were saying that, oh, because of patriarchy, that's why shorter men aren't as considered as sexually attractive. And I'm like, is it patriarchy or is it just, like, millions of years of evolution, right? Like, of females preferring taller men. Yeah, like deer, for example. The females usually want to mate with the larger bucks with the larger antlers and shit, right? If you're a buck that has smaller antlers or is just physically smaller and weak, Weaker, and the does don't want to mate with you. Tough luck. I'm sorry. That's just luck of the draw. You just lost the genetic lottery. Sorry, but it's life. Right. And there's some things that are culturally induced, but like the liberal fem cells making all of their feminism about like, how could people don't sexually objectify me as much as they do skinny blonde white women? Yeah, this other woman. And then making that like a reflection of patriarchy rather than like talking about specifically representation and focusing on that. And that's where the disconnect has been coming between all of the different fem cell groups groups and then liberal feminism and secondarily radical feminism. It's like the lib fem cells and the rad fem cells are just duking it out. Honestly. And we're over here like, could y'all quit? Like, <laughs> like all this is stupid. None of you are going to win this argument because like, listen, rad fem cells, you cannot control what makes a man's dick hard. I'm sorry, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Lib fem cells, you can't control what men find sexually attractive. Rad fem cells, you can't control what women know to have sex with, right? You can't tell us like, oh, be politically lesbian or whatever they're trying to push sometimes. <laughs> like, we're not doing it. We're like dick and you guys going to have to figure out a way to get over it. We're going to live over here in reality. <laughs> Yeah, where some people are ugly. Reality is that some people in any given population, some people are faster than others. Some people are taller. Some people can draw better. Some people are more physically attractive. And what's can generally considered physically attractive is pretty consistent culturally, even with all the weird racialized stuff, is generally like things like facial symmetry. A lot of it is biological. Yeah, like facial symmetry, people generally like, you know, people who are like taller, who are fit, maybe some muscles, that kind of stuff, not morbidly obese. You know, whether thinness or more curviness, that can change through time, that sort of stuff. But like, yeah, there are certain standards of beauty that are actually just pretty universal regardless of culture but yeah maybe cut out some of that but anyways this feels mean overall markers of health are generally universally attractive clear skin etc so in some ways this logic okay so this is continuing on after the femme cell said i'd rather be able to talk about being ugly than just to try to convince myself that i'm pretty she said feel you on that so next uh, paragraph in some ways this logic is even more uncomfortable than the original incel logic in a 2021 essay the feminist theorist jilly voice k argued that it's not just incels who assume that any woman can get sex from men. This is a widespread cultural assumption. Women have long been understood to hold sexual capital in modern dating culture. They're expected to wield it. Fem cells complicate that story. They feel the same sense of humiliation and exclusion that incels do, but they react to those feelings differently. Incel discourse tends to project anger outward onto society in a hatred of women. Kay told me when we spoke recently, facts, the anger is expressed radically through threats of violence or through bizarre, though arguably imaginative, calls for the government to re- redistribute sex. Facts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Sounding familiar. In fem cell discourse, it does tend to be much more turned inward on the self, she said. Though society is discussed as inherently lookist and unfair, fem cells are not out to change it because they don't see it as changeable. Yeah, they don't see it as changeable. Yeah, I mean, this is goes back to the mountains of research about how men versus women deal with problems. And one of them is women tend to internalize it and men tend to externalize it as a problem with everybody else because male audacity. Another point I want to make about this article is that incels and fem cells want different things. Incels tend to want just sex. And so the whole incel argument like, oh, any woman can get sex for men. The male incels don't seem to realize or care that female incels, they don't just want sex. They want a relationship. They want to be treated like a human being. Yeah, it's like male incels want to be able to treat women as sexual objects and fem cells want to be treated as people. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the difference in this and how the quote, fantasies of what life would be like if they were attractive play out between the fem cells and the incels. When you look at the incels, a lot of their like male power fantasies is being able to like treat women like sexual objects. And have sex with lots of women and treat them like shit. Yeah, no, and exactly. They've literally drawn these cartoons of the so-called quote unquote chads, like doing all sorts of sexually degrading things to women, like, like slapping their penis in their face. Or like getting them pregnant and then leaving them, you know, a single mom. Like slapping them around, etc. This is the incel power fight. This is the incel sexual fantasy. They're crying inside because they'll never be able to sexually abuse and objectify a woman in the same manner as much as they think attractive men do, which is bizarre. Well, not bizarre when you understand male behavior, but they see this as like the ultimate privilege is to be able to treat women as disposable, degraded objects. That's their goal. 
Yeah, and the fem cells want the opposite of that. A lot of them read like fan fiction stuff or draw like fan fiction. Like their fa- fanfic cartoons are like a man sees them and sees their beauty on the inside and falls in love with them and treats them really well and treats them like a princess and that kind of stuff. Like the fem cell fantasies, their fandom stuff is very different, paints a very different picture. They want a man who loves and cherishes them. Or the male incels want to be the sort of man who can like abuse women. It's a very different power fantasy. Continuing, this inward-facing posture contributes to the difficulty in estimating the group's size and summarizing its positions. When the most well-known Reddit forums specifically for femcells, our true femcells was banned from the platform in June 2020, it had just over 25,000 members. The subreddit was one of 2,000 forums banned for, quote, promoting hate after a major change to Reddit's content policies. A Reddit spokesperson declined to provide more detail on the decision because it was probably bullshit, to be clear. <laughs> They're not going to give any detail because it was probably like, well, we have, they probably both sides did it. Oh, yeah, the male incels, the female incels, they're both equally as bad. Get rid of them. The larger Vindicta subreddit was created as a space for fem cells to discuss looks maxing or improving their physical appearance with a combination of soft makeup and hard plastic surgery. I guess the soft looks maxing is makeup, hard looks maxing is plastic surgery but has recently seen a diluting influx of non-fem cells looking for beauty advice and sometimes offering words of encouragement. (laughs) Read the next paragraph. This is so funny. (laughs) This has caused problems. Reminder to fem cells, people who lie to you and tell you that you look fine the way you are are not on your side, a moderator wrote last year. They benefit from you remaining ugly and not fixing your looks because it makes them more attractive relative to you. This is why the fem cells had to go. It's that sort of attitude, which is why we didn't let them hang out with us on FDS is because like, first of all, like, yeah, there were some women who would wander into the true fem cells of the Vindicta subreddits and be like, and say the same things that we thought, which is like, you guys aren't that ugly. <laughs> like, no, they're not. That's the thing. They're, you just look average, like, right? And so we look, we look at these women and we're like, you look fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with you. And they actually get mad at us for saying that kind of stuff. They're like, no, I am ugly. I am a one out of ten. I am a two out of ten. I'm a horrible monstrous gargoyle. A man hasn't looked at me in ten years kind of thing, right? So they get really fucking hostile to women who say anything, like, positive towards them. You know, FDS is about leveling up, maximizing female benefit and stuff. We're not into the whole like self-flagellating and like being at the bottom of the hierarchy and crying about it and staying there, right? We want to increase our position in the hierarchy. We want to increase our power, increase the quality of our life and so on. And they don't. Yeah, I don't understand it because even on the incel subreddits, and I used to lurk some of the incel subreddits, and there's a really funny subreddit called incel selfie, where it would be sort of be guys who would take selfies of themselves and be like, is it over for me based on how they look? And like most of them were like overwhelmingly young guys hadn't really grown into like their bodies or their looks yet. The vast majority are pretty average. There was like a handful of them where I was like, yeah, bro, it's gonna be real tough for you because they were really short and they were just <laughs> facially fucked up and there was nothing that could be done about that. But actually, even among the incels, at least the ones that were brave enough to take selfies, they actually looked fairly average, right? And I'm like, 100% of your problem is your personality. (laughs) Which is actually not comforting to them because the incels actually get mad when you say that too. The incels get really mad when you say, oh, you're not that ugly. It's just your personality because like, at least like looks, they can at least blame someone else. If it's their personality, they have no one (laughs) to blame with themselves, right? And that's just a really uncomfortable thought for them. Or lack of grooming. That's also the problem is them just not having figured out how to groom themselves in a way that's attractive or consistent. Like, I, mean, I saw a lot of struggle braids, struggle beards, etc. I'm like, you could take care of that and vastly improve your chances of a woman finding you attractive. You just choose not to. I want to say, like, to the incels and the fem cells, like, what you call looks maxing is just what normal people do normally. <laughs> <laughs> Just like showering, putting on makeup, like grooming yourself, (laughs) right? Like, I just want to say it's not that hard. The one thing that I feel like a lot of them don't understand, and I feel actually really bad for Gen Z because of the fact that they've only known the social media age, Instagram age, is that they don't understand that how much attractiveness is actually a learned skill. And it actually took me a while to really like catch on that. Some of the women who look seem like they look really effortless at school every day in high school. A lot of them, they would spend hours perfecting their makeup, right? They would spend hours of perfecting their makeup. I was one of those girls. I got up at five in the morning every day in high school to do my hair and put in hair extensions and my makeup. They spent a ton of money on products, like trial and error, trying to figure out what worked with their hair, what worked, what didn't. Obviously, that takes money. So sometimes I got a job at 15 and spent most of my paycheck on cigarettes, actually, and grooming products. I quit smoking. Yeah. 
yeah, so I spent it mostly on cigarettes, drugs, and grooming products. I feel like a lot of them didn't quite understand that that was the case. A lot of them didn't realize that that was the case, that a lot of women were doing that. So they think a lot of this stuff just happens. You know, they obsessively search through magazines to look for the new, like, fashion trends, etc. Like, these women study fashion, style, etc. Like, like a part-time job, basically. And also, they have the money to sustain their habits. So it's not necessarily that you're ugly. It's that you either haven't dedicated the time and effort to putting into your looks like they have, or you don't have the money to sustain it. And I think there's a famous quote. It's like, you're not ugly, you're just poor. Yeah, that's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think, I feel like a lot of femsels aren't aware of that. So when they look at themselves and like, I'm hideously ugly. I'm like, no, you look like an average person who hasn't done, who hasn't put in hours of work on their appearance. Like the women that you think are so much more attractive than you have. Because if they didn't put in the amount of work that they put on their appearance every day, they would look just like, right? No, there's definitely room for a conversation around like how, you know, starting when I was like 14, 15, I put way too much emphasis on beauty standards. I had kind of an eating disorder actually when I was in my teen years, just to stay thin. And there's definitely room to be had about how that's harmful to women. And like the pressure that women feel to meet these kinds of beauty standards comes at an enormous cost to not just financially, but also to your mental health, your physical health and so on. Right. So, you know, I'd be more open to having those kinds of conversations and how like tragic actually it is, in my opinion, that a lot of young girls feel whether they meet the beauty standards or not, they all feel that pain and that trauma around beauty standards. Right. But at the same time, it's like, it's really hard to have those kinds of conversations with fem cells because whenever I try to open up about that kind of experience, they're all very hostile to me. Like I've talked about some of the stuff on Twitter and they're all like, Oh, you know, you whore, you like, you know, spend all that. Like they call me a Stacy. They like call me stupid for spending all that time and money trying to be beautiful and stuff. And like, they see me as part of the problem. Oh, you're perpetuating toxic patriarchal beauty standards and stuff like that. So it's really hard to have those kinds of conversations with some fem cells because they're not really willing to try to see the perspective of the woman on the, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, right? But they don't really seem to be that interested in, you know, trying to understand things from another woman's perspective. Yeah, it seems again that they're more or less trying to blame. They don't want to admit that maybe it's not that they're hideously ugly. Maybe it's their personality (laughs) or perhaps they've just internalized some really, really bad messaging because of like people being shitty in high school. I mean, high school doesn't matter, but I feel like so many people just have so much unresolved high school trauma. You know, like so many adults going through life with like trauma that they got in high school that they just have internalized that worldview and not really challenged it. You know, and it's sad a little bit because I feel like I've, at least I hope I've like matured and grown since then. Sometimes I meet people and it's like very obvious to me that they're still in that kind of high school mentality. I stopped giving a shit the day after my graduation. I'm never going to see these clowns again. And I just laughed. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Like, um, <laughs> I like graduated from my small town high school. Like, I'm never going to see you fucking townies ever again. Peace out, bitch. I'm off to the big city. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Healthy self-esteem. Okay. So next paragraph. Now fem cells are scattered across what Kay tentatively calls the femisphere. Some left Reddit altogether, moving instead to small fem cell specific boards on the Reddit lookalike site, the pink pill, which has only 580 members. Another reason the fem cell subculture is difficult to visualize and comprehend, they're unwanted even in many women-only spaces, so they sometimes hide or are hidden. They were tolerated in the notorious female dating strategy subreddit for a while, whoop, whoop, but were later kicked out. This is, um, <laughs> I'm trying to see these two links here. So there's one link to the Jezebel article, and the second link is to, uh, oh, <laughs> this is to Jan. So the word notorious is highlighted, and then it goes to the Jezebel article, which, again, it annoys me that, like, that is now, that piece of shit that they call journalism is now seen as like, oh, that's the defining article of like, if you want to understand FDS, go read that kind of thing, right? It's so dishonest, right? But then it says, but we're later kicked out. Let's click on that. Where does that go? And that was clicked. And that goes to a rant by the OG Jammies. Oh, isn't it closed because the subreddit's private? Well, they no, they have an archive link here. That was the OG Jammies ranting. Reminder, FDS is not winked out over at Femme Cell Word dating strategy, so you should date. Oh yeah, I remember that one. That was a really good day, actually. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Public dragging of everyone. I really enjoyed that day as a moderator. <laughs> I feel like that was the first in a long series of mods versus the user base. Yeah, of like disagreements between the FDS mods and the FDS user base being like, you know, you should level up and stop being a sad fucking losers. 
Like, and then the user base who are still sad, non-leveled up, being like, how dare you? If I remember correctly, because this is after the true fem cells was banned. And this is when we started seeing that massive uptick of fem cell activity. And it started pissing everybody off from the mod team. Like, y'all, could y'all like stop posting? Like, because every other post would be about lookism and then like racist facial standards. There was one fem cell who went off like, yeah, she posted a article it was about a certain like race space it was a racially themed article which we removed because we thought it could be like construed as like racist and she went off on us like accusing fds mods of being racist for like not letting her speak her truth and stuff and she just like went on like a one year like harassment campaign against fds mods because we removed her post and banned her was that the one that showed up to our uh, lecture that we did with gail dines i think that was the same one yes I think that was the same one. Yeah. <laughs> this woman is mental. She went around to all of the FDS descent subs, like saying like FDS mods are racist and like not having any receipts or proof, like just saying like they removed my post, which was racist. And therefore that makes them racist. She got up at like the crack of dawn, paid $30 to come harass us at um, a lecture we gave with Dr. Gail Dines. It was pretty, pretty mental. So I was like, yeah, this is why they can't sit with us. This is why they can't sit with us, right? This is why we're allowed to draw back boundaries with these types of women like i've actually met a few women like this in real life where it's hard to describe but they just get a sort of strange obsession with me like i have to destroy her i call them ankle biters because i touched on this idea you know overcoming conflicts with women the cat fight episode there's a specific type of woman where like she is of a lower status than me in her mind, even if I treat her as my equal, like in her mind, she sees herself as beneath me. And then she's like, has this sort of like, I have to fight the power. I need to take down Lilith. Like bitch thinks she's so hot. Well, I'm going to like, or that bitch thinks she's hot shit. Like she thinks she's so good at her career. She thinks she's got this and she's got the man and whatever. Like they'll just decide that they hate me and become just obsessed with like just ankle biting. It's just so kind of weird and pathetic because they're coming at it from like beneath me. Right. So... <laughs> Where it's kind of like a little, little yappy chihuahua, just like, Nyeh! like, you know, so it's not effective. That's the other thing is like, but dedicate years of their lives to trying to like destroy me, but it's mostly not effective and just makes them look crazy. Like I said, if they were there for ju- to just ask about strategies to date, if you're not quote unquote traditionally attractive, then that'd be one thing. But all of this other stuff that they're doing is a problem. So um, that's kind of why we had to tell the themselves to get lost okay so the forever alone subreddit welcomes them but forbids the use of any incel or femcel lingo a woman only 4chan like image board called lolcow.farm has a reputation as another site that femcels have drifted to and is covered with femcel lingo but virently denied their presence there when i posted on the site about the story they're a fringe group that is mostly a meme one commenter wrote femcels aren't real another added I do think that fem cells are real, but they are a friend group. Yeah. Fem cells are real and their existence has meaning. But thinking of them as a unified group with specific political goals is less useful than thinking of them as overlooked individuals who are now being swept around the web, sometimes letting their insecurities and resentments lead them into unproductive conversations. The architecture of many of the forums they've ended up in encourages dis- defensiveness, border patrolling, exclusion, even aggression. For, for instance, while fem cell culture is not inherently transphobic, there is an overlap or amenability to transphobia, Kay told me. Femcells, especially now, tend to find themselves on identity-based forums that are fixated on biological essentialist ideas of gender. Women are like this, men are like that, as Kay put it, more stagnant than revolutionary. These spaces do just kind of become inward-looking, very defensive, rather than about imagining radical new futures, she said. So the problem is, is that, once again, I feel like they're shoehorning transphobia into everything. Oh, they're alt-right. Oh, they're white. Oh, they're transphobic. Like, they're trying to shoehorn a lot of other... Like, fem cells are politically diverse, just like incels are, okay? As I just said, there's trad fem cells, there's rad fem cells, there's lib fem cells. Trad fem cells go on TikTok in their little house in the prairie dress and talk about how submissive they are and why aren't men picking them like <laughs> yeah and then there's the rad femme cells those are the ones who tend to be more quote-unquote transphobic they're the ones who you know i call them black pillars generally they just like make fun of women they don't like and make fun of men in dresses that's the extent and limitation of their political activism and then there's the lib femme cells who are generally more like the you know if lesbians don't take dick they're a bigot the lib femme cells will say things like policing trans women's gender expression is contributing to to lookism, right? They're the ones that'll say things like black women don't fit mainstream beauty standards, just like trans women don't fit mainstream beauty standards. Therefore, policing gender expression in trans women is racist and contributing to lookism. 
and contributing to their fans of them, right? So like, this is just not true, right? This is where I kind of feel like they cherry pick what they want to see to push certain narratives. But like I said, there are liberal femme cells who are pro-trans ideology and they justify it under the lens of like, oh, if trans women aren't considered women, even if they look very, very masculine, then I'm going to get policed in my beauty expression too. Yeah, they equate being a femme cell and being an unattractive woman to being saying that same experience is the experience of being trans. So again, politically diverse, them cherry picking the narrative that they want to see here in the Atlantic is just full. So once again, trying to shoe her in the conversation a certain way. And again, I don't understand what they mean by imagining radical new futures. And this is how they always do a cop out here. What radical new futures? People have been having sex for millions upon millions of years. And there's some things about that are fairly consistent. So when they say imagining radical new futures, I would love to see their outline of that. But again, this is how they kind of hide them not having actual solutions, right? Okay, so in the past year, the term femcel has taken a surprising turn. It has been adopted by mainstream internet. On Twitter, it's an easy synonym for depressed or not dating right now. On Instagram, it's a sort of funny word to pair with a baffling meme or a picture in which you actually look really hot and disaffected. It's newly popular on TikTok which has seen an odd trend towards semi-ironic sex negativity. And on Tumblr, it's the latest word for describing your basic Tumblr user, a romantic loner who likes the blog. The era of the incel is over. The era of the fencel has begun, reads a tweet that has been circulating as a meme. The text appears above a graph that shows an increase in the number of women under 35 who say they have not had sex in the past year. The graph was created by a right-wing think tank with the creepy task of promoting the natural family. I think it's pretty normal that a lot of women who haven't had sex in the past year because of the pandemic, right? It wasn't like seriously looking for a boyfriend for like the first three quarters of the pandemic. So does that make me a femme cell? Like, no, <laughs> you know, it's pretty normal, I guess. Yeah, it went down in 2021. Oh, so they didn't have sex during the pandemic? Duh. Like... There was like a massive spike in 2019, 2020, 2021. So I'm like, yeah, 2020 is when the the pandemic took off. And we've been talking about this in general. A lot of women are losing their appetite for dating because a lot of men are just like, you know, they just live within their mom's basement, playing video games, jerking off to porn. Like the overall quality of men is generally decreased. And I guess men are unhappy with women because we're not the submissive servants that they've been raised to think that they're entitled to. So, you know, men will be like, well, women aren't the sort of women that men want to date anymore either because they're not submissive and hot anymore. Okay, bye. We're good. (laughs) We'd rather not date that. If men are unhappy with us for not being submissive and we're unhappy with them for being shitty, then it's probably best if we don't date. (laughs) This is a war of attrition. We're just just not going to fuck. So moving on. So it's like an appropriation of ugly girl culture, Amanda said, when I asked her about the diffusion of the term. I did kind of get that old feeling of like, you guys are not part of the group. You're too pretty to be part of this group. So basically, the fem cells are gatekeeping fem seldom. The same thing with a lot of the women on the subreddit Vindicta who weren't that ugly either. We kept telling like, there's literally nothing wrong with you. And in fact, you might even be considered pretty. So on Tumblr in particular, the word is totally divorced from its original meaning and is following the natural goofy path of any internet word that is perceived to confer edginess and intrigue. Lila, a 21-year-old Tumblr user, recently used the femcel tag in a post that reads, in curling cursive script, asking myself if I can cook my instant noodles with vodka instead of water. The tropes of the toxic loner are not just for boys, she told me. I agreed to use only her first name because she was worried about harassment. Right. (laughs) That's what happens with women. Tumblr users are adding hashtag femcel to images of antisocial icons like the super skinny and delusional Natalie Portman in Black Swan, the Lisbon sisters of the Virgin Suicides, and of course, Lana Del Rey, from whom they learned of the joys of cigarettes and cherry schnapps. I just thought that the word was funny and maybe even a little shocking. Hannah, a 19-year-old Tumblr user who also tagged some of her posts with femcel, told me, I knew it would get people's attention. Most of my posts are ironic. I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for two years. <laughs> That's you know what the funniest fucking thing? It's like I get so much hate on Twitter for like, oh you date men. Oh, you know, you're a traitor to women if you date men. You know, they think FDS that we're traitors because we center men and so on. But I was told recently by one of my contacts within the femcel community who I'm mutuals with on Twitter, she was saying like, no, actually in all of our Discord chats and all of our group chats and stuff, like all, most of these women who dunk on women for dating men are themselves in relationships with low value men. She said basically like the women who hate FDS the most are all women in relationships with shitty men. 
That makes the most sense, to be honest. Like nobody <laughs> wants to re-examine their situation and whether or not it's benefiting them. So, I mean, no one's going to drag you up to get into the life where you belong. All right. Exactly. So here's the thing, like the reason why they're in relationships with these low value men, though, and they clearly unhappy and multi-year, like two, three, four, 10 year relationships with shitty men. And they feel like, oh, well, since I'm ugly, I'm not going to do any better. They'd rather stay in a relationship with a man that they hate because they think they can't do any better and they don't want to be single. Right. Sad as fuck. Like, I'm like, I can't relate. But no one's going to force them to change, right? That's that's why I kind of feel like, okay, if you don't want to be part of FDS, then don't. That's weird behavior to me. That's the category of women who become ankle biters. It's like they see women, they think that they're inferior. They see women they think are doing better than them. And they just decide, I have to take you down. I have to destroy you. Next, as silly or maybe even annoying as that may be, using the word femcell more lightly could hold some promise. Its literal use has been nearly tapped out. At the personal level, true femcells see two main options for themselves. They either give up on love and society altogether to quote lie here and rot again th- another reason why we didn't include them fds number one is like if you want a high value man you have to be a high value woman you have to level up the strategy you have to have strategy the whole lie here and rot attitude is fundamentally not compatible with fds or they devote themselves to ascending through rigorous self-improvement and sometimes dangerous body modification. Broadly speaking, they're finding their way to extremes, but not toward anything revolutionary. A smaller number have recognized a more politically hopeful third option, Kay told me, which is to give up on men, but not on the world. In abandoning heterosexuality, they work on finding joy and intimacy in other ways or focusing on other areas of life, which are not to do with romance and sex. So the political lesbian black pillar crowd, the wig towels. Yeah, and the wig tabs, which again, we're not wigged out. I mean, there's some women that say they take breaks and they're not necessarily, you know, dating at the moment, but like as a lifestyle choice of singleness as a lifestyle choice, that wasn't supposed to be what female dating strategy was about. It's about like engaging the world as it is. If you want to opt out, that's your choice, but it's just not the direction that we wanted to go. Exactly. It's like, so again, I'm not against women taking breaks from dating. What bothers me is when the women who are not dating attack the women who are dating. That's a problem. Yeah. But definitely finding joy and intimacy in ways in other areas of your life other than romance and sex is also really important for leveling up, even for women who are dating, in my opinion. Yeah, everyone should do that. We're not saying that you shouldn't do that. We're just saying that that's not just a femme cell thing. That's a being a normal person thing. If you've dedicated yourself to, quote, avoiding relationships of any kind, and that's a lifestyle choice that you've made, that's not conducive with the strategy of dating, right? So it's fine if you do that. It's just not female dating strategy was not the place for it. And so people keep trying to put that on there rather than going to, quote, forever alone or going to Wigtow where, where that was their strategy that would have been more appropriate. That's how the mods ended up raging against the user base that appeared on female dating strategy after Wigtow, True Femcells, and a bunch of other female subreddits got banned. I don't think Wigtow got... Did Wigtow get banned? Did it? Again, if it got banned, I'm not a Wigtow, but I would be so mad if they... Okay, no, it didn't get banned. Okay, good. Because I don't think Wigtow is... The male one. I don't think that one's been banned yet, but it's quarantined. MGTOW got banned because they were linked to another terrorist attack. So MGTOW is definitely banned now. But it was, it's fairly recent. Oh, right, right. Yeah. But the women going their own way are so innocent. Like they just like post like pictures of their cats and like gardens and like aesthetic pictures of like tea and stuff like that or their car. And it's like way more chill and overall like, you know, yeah, they complain about men, but I say it's like less bad than way, way, way less bad than MGTOW. Yeah, MGTOW, their users were actually linked to terrorist attacks, meaning like straight up people found the posts that several people made before they committed out terrorist attacks. So that's why Reddit shut them down finally. Okay, so use more airily. The term femcell still highlights certain contradictions in contemporary life. There are many people who are experiencing similar, less articulated anxiety about their place in the gender order and about the pressure to locate happiness through sex and romance, which they must find through success in a marketplace. The 21st century was supposed to bring a wider range of options than this, but to many, it doesn't appear appear to have. There are still winners and losers, Kay argues. She also cites the feminist philosopher Amiya Srinivasan's 2018 essay on incels. Does anyone have the right to sex? Absolutely the fuck not. In it, Srinivasan wonders how to dwell in the ambivalent place where we acknowledge that no one is obligated to desire anyone else, that no one has a right to be desired, but also that who is desired and who isn't is a political question. I mean, it's partially is. It partially is in the sense of like, yes, there are some things about like attractiveness that can be sort of culturally influenced. And a lot of that has to do with perceptions of wealth, right? That's how like, yeah, the whole BBL thing became big. And then back in the day when 
women who had more weight were considered more attractive because the wealthy could afford more food. A lot of what we consider attractive is set by wealthy. So in some respects, it can be politicized in the sense of, yeah, women's aspiration to attractiveness is set by the wealthy. But the thing is, is like for men in general, there's such a wide, actual diverse amount of things they find sexually attractive that more or less the beauty standards exist as a way to sell women products. <laughs> because you could be a woman who looks like a supermodel and be working class and it's not going to put you up on the social hierarchy just because you see another model who is from like, you know, who's like a nepotism baby model, someone like Kendall Jenner or Hailey Bieber. And you could look just like them, but be working class and your life is going to be completely different. So in a lot of ways, like the beauty standard exists just for rich people sell poor women products. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't change that men, you know, I mean, like there's a lot of men that still like thick women that still like women who don't look like models who don't look like that, right? First of all, I actually just want to say like, we do get criticism sometimes on FDS where we say like, yeah, even if you're not a supermodel, men will still want to fuck you. And like, I almost feel like, who cares? Like, it doesn't matter if men will want to fuck you. Men will fuck a apple pie. They will fuck a hole in the ground. Okay. Men will stick their dick in anything. They don't care. Right. So just because men will fuck you, I feel like your attractiveness or your value as a person shouldn't really like be based on that. But you know, we've talked about that with the fem self feminism episode. It doesn't have that much as much currency as people try to make it seem like. We keep trying to express that to people that like there's a lot of very beautiful women that get treated like absolute shit in their relationships. Just think of how many celebrities are constantly cheated on or deal with skirts. Some men will be deliberately mentally abusive to attractive women to try to make her have lower self-esteem so that she'll be more available to him, right? In fact, like in the pickup artist community, they say, oh, if she's ugly, you should compliment her. That'll make her feel special. If she's attractive, you should neg her and insult her. That'll take her ego down or whatever, right? So every woman gets misogyny, but pretty privilege is, I feel, actually just female oppression. Like, But like this idea that like, oh, you only deserve to be treated well if you're beautiful or that, you know, attractive women get it better and that that's how it is. It's a sign of female oppression. That's not pretty privilege. And you can never be beautiful enough to outrun female oppression. Ask like literally any beautiful, ask Halle Berry, ask any of the Kardashians, right? Like they, all of their husbands have treated them like shit or boyfriends have treated them like shit. That's part of why they still have a show all these years later. So, I mean, Kardashian slash Jenners, the idea that you can like get pretty enough to outrun cultural misogyny is false. And so I think sometimes fem cells overemphasize looks when what they're experiencing is just garden variety misogyny that would happen even if they were attracted. It just would take maybe a slightly different form. Who is desired and who isn't is a political question. Femcells dwell in that ambivalent space all the time. Some may risk, as they say, rotting there, but others may emerge having thought more deeply than most about alternative ways of ordering their lives, of finding happiness and dignity on their own terms. Amanda no longer thinks of herself as a femcell, and she looks back on the time when she did as an experience. Her era of, quote, femcelldom, as she calls it. Today, she's sympathetic toward the young women who have adopted the word, even if somewhat insincerely or inaccurately. On the internet, young women see more images of beautiful people every day than they have at any other time in history, she pointed out. A TikTok feed is basically the popular girl in high school times 10 million. It's easy to feel like an outsider, and it's also easy to feel like you've been lied to. If traditional beauty standards don't matter, then why are they still celebrated all the time? What are we, stupid? I think for girls, it just feels kind of infantilizing. She said, like, we're not allowed to think of ourselves as how we really see ourselves. It was illuminating for a time to have a word for that. You know what? I think mostly like this article, other than like the weird political shoehorning that we talked about, I did mostly like this article. I thought it was somewhat fair to, you know, relatively fair to the fem cells. And I do think it is important to have these kind of conversations. Yeah, I want to do a part two to this episode where we actually do some fem cell dating strategies because we didn't really get into the meat of the strategy that we wanted to in this episode. But uh, meaning like, what do you do if you are truly just a femme cell, meaning there's something with you that's so far outside the norm. How do you then navigate the dating space? So I think there's room for discussion on that. And we can talk about the pressures that are against you as a femme cell. But I think this article was really illuminating because I think it's going to actually describe what we were talking about as far as like, first of all, interactions with femme cells, but also give more color to what the movement is and what's happening. And then from there, we can take what's actually happening to these women and then create some applicable strategies, which we'll do in part two, I think, of this episode. So thanks for listening, queens. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the female dating strategy for weekly bonus content and our Twitter at femdatstrat, as well as our Instagram at underscore the female dating strategy and our website, www.thefemaledatingstrategy.com if you want to talk about this episode. And also we're starting to ramp up. So there's a lot of people posting on there now. So check out the forum. Thanks for listening, queens. And for all you incels out there, it's over for you, bro. Die mad. Die mad.